Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. In the last lecture of EC 2026, Introduction to Signal Processing, we introduced Z-transforms. Today, we'll talk about the convolution property of Z-transforms. Convolution is a fairly mind-bending operation. It turns out that if you convolve two signals in the time domain, that corresponds to multiplication in the Z-transform domain. Now, this shouldn't be very surprising. Discrete time Fourier transforms had the same property, and Z-transforms are a generalization of DTFTs. Let's look at a very simple example. Suppose you have this sequence, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 9. Totally unfamiliar. Anyway, I want to emphasize that x of 0 is this 3 right here. Now, suppose that I were to pass this through a delay system. At the end of the last lecture, we saw that a delay system has a system function of z to the minus 1. So I can take the z transform of the sequence, plug it in here, and when I multiply through the z to the minus 1, just all of the z's lower in power by 1. So I wind up with this. And when I convert it back into the time domain, I see that everything shifted over by 1. The 3 now goes with this z to the minus 1, so the 3 shows up in the n equals 1 spot. And this is a general property. If you want to delay a signal by one time unit, you multiply it by z to the minus 1 in the z-transform domain. And this property generalizes. If you want to delay a signal by 37, then in the z-transform domain, you multiply it by z to the power of minus 37. Here's a more general example. The sequence x is 1, minus 1, 1, minus 1. It's important, though, to note that the sequence starts at n equals 1. And then h is the sequence 1, 2, 3, 4. Convolving these signals in the time domain corresponds to multiplying their z-transforms. When we compute the z-transforms, be careful to note that we have the delta n minus 1 here, so this corresponds to this 1 z to the minus 1 term. There's no term with a delta n, so there's no term with a z to the minus 0. Now we can perform the convolution directly and organize our computations using a table. Here I'm taking this sequence 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1, multiplying it by 1, sticking it here, multiplying it by 2, sticking it here, and so on. And then once we have all of these rows, we can sum along the columns to get the result 1, 1, 2, 2, minus 3, 1, and minus 4. And remember, convolution is commutative. So I could take this sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, multiply it by 1, plunk it down, multiply it by minus 1, shift it over by 1, plunk it down, etc., and get the same result. Alternatively, we could perform the convolution by multiplying the corresponding z-transforms. So here we have the z-transform of h, here we have the z-transform of x, and then we can work through the algebra of multiplying those polynomials, ultimately giving this result. But note we're not quite done yet. This is the z-transform of the result. We want to convert it back into the time domain. And to do that, you can just read off the coefficients. Or if you want to write it as an equation, you could write this out using delta functions. So we see that convolution and polynomial multiplication are computationally equivalent. I personally don't find slogging through all of this algebra to be any easier than setting up the convolution as a table and working it this way. I personally find doing this algebra to be more error prone, but your mileage may vary. Let's do another example. Here we imagine having this input x of n, and we want to convolve it with the impulse response of a system h of n. It's easy enough to take the z-transform of x and the z-transform of h, and when I multiply these polynomials together, I wind up with a z-transform that I can easily invert to get this result. Now you could get the same thing by taking this function x of n and convolving it with a delta which will just give you the same function, and then taking x of n and convolving it with delta n minus 1, 
which just shifts it to the right by one, and then doing the algebra on the resulting expressions containing delta functions. We've previously seen that if you have a couple of linear time invariant systems in series, you can exchange the order of the systems, and in particular, you could replace that series of systems with a single system whose impulse response is given by the convolution of the impulse responses of the individual systems. So, if you want to do things in terms of Z-transforms, you can replace your cascade of LTI systems with a single LTI system whose system function is given by the product of the system functions of the individual systems. Let's consider an example where the first system is a first-order difference, and the second system is a two-point running sum. If I look at the system functions of the individual systems, I can then multiply those together and see that I get something that looks like a first-order difference system, except it doesn't subtract the input one time unit in the past. It subtracts the input of two time units into the past. Notice I don't have any x in minus 1 term here, because if I look at the structure of this polynomial multiplication, the cross terms cancel.